Hey guys, welcome. I am a bit late. Apologies for that. If you've been waiting around for me, uh, trying to get my frame looking somewhat symmetrical or asymmetrical or however we like it. Um, appealing to my eyes. That's all that really matters. Uh, welcome. Here we are. It's Drops of Light. Today's 29th of June here in New Zealand. It's 9am on a Wednesday morning. Time for chat with Matt. Did I say Drops of Light before? It's chat with Matt. Drops of Light is the one I do in my subscription group. Um, I have a huge list of questions to get through this morning, so um, which I did look at first thing, and then I've been busy, busy, busy since, which is why I'm a bit late. And then, of course, sorry, I'm just clearing my pathway on this computer to uh, said um, group so that I can find the list of questions that I'm going to talk about. Hey, Sister Erina, who else is here? Hey. Lots of people are here, but I've only seen one name. That's okay. Um, so, yeah, lots of questions. It is a uh, new moon in about six and a half hours, thereabouts. Six and a half hours to the moon is new exact. So we're right in the sort of the intensity of old endings. <laughs> that have been feeling great. Lots of stuff has been coming up. Um, hey, Sister Debbie Love, happy Wednesday to you too. Um Although most of the people watching this, it's Tuesday for them, but that's that's us, right? We're special. We're from the future. Um, <laughs> we're from the future. So, um, well, what was I talking about? Oh, freak knows. Um, memory, right? Oh, God. Talk about Hey Sister Sheena. Another Wednesday night from Napier. Um, I presume you're from Napier. <laughs> Hence the name. Um Memory. Talk about memory. I can't even remember when I last remembered something. <laughs> it's, it's, one, I can't remember to write things on my list. Two, I can't remember to look at my list. I got to the end of the day yesterday and happened to glance down and see my list. and went, oh, look at that. There's all those things that I thought were important <laughs> that I didn't get to today. There was some, some perspective at some time that those things that I wrote down were important, but uh, needless to say, they didn't get done. Uh, <laughs> Freaking hell. Uh, yeah, to, living in the moment. Um, there's, there's no time like right now, and, and the memory seems to be getting less and less uh, reliable, which, you know, is quite concerning to someone, you know, who drives themselves uh, mentally egoically through getting the world right and remembering to do things that are quote-unquote important. But if you relax into the joy of the world, which is not easy to do, if you relax into the moment and enjoy what's presenting, then, then what's memory, right? It can serve a purpose, of course. Of course, we remember things. And of course, I have been remembering some things. Like, I remember my children's names and stuff like that when I'm talking to them, generally. Most of the time, at least. It just seems doing things that I... Um... You're in the Wellington region. Oh, so am I. I'm on the Carpe Coast. Coming to you from a sunny, not so sunny, uh, Otahanga. What a hunger. How are we supposed to say it? I'm not very good with Māori because I'm Australian. Um, it's my excuse anyway. Uh, so, uh, getting to this list. Uh, so, so, what I put on Facebook, I'm, I'm quickly eating up my time and I was even late getting here, so that's not great. Um, I, I put a little post on from Osho. I'm not, you know, like a great Osho fan, but... Um, you know, he had definitely, I, the things I like about Osho was he definitely bucked the system. He definitely was not, um, <laughs> not a conformist in the, in the Hindu spiritual world, um, or in the spiritual world in general. Um, and I kind of like that. Um, although I'm not, you know, hundred percent aligned with everything that he taught and said, and especially not hundred percent aligned with, um, you know, the way his community group lineage, whatever you want to call that, his legacy has developed either. But I did like this quote from him, um, which says, people who are spiritually minded tend to suffer from anxiety and depression more. Do you know why? Because their eyes are open to a world that is in need of repair. They literally have an increased ability to feel the emotions of other people around them. Um, and that is so, so true. And I know it's nothing new to you guys. I, tell, so I talk about this a lot, but it's valid to remember it, right? Because it's so easy also for those of us who are spiritually minded to blame ourselves for freaking everything, to make ourselves the problem, to take 
uber responsibility to the point of crippling burden our happiness, right? And we are very slow, <laughs> quote unquote, to, to blame, uh, which is not a bad thing, right? Blaming others for your unhappiness is not generally very empowering. However, blaming yourself for it also is not empowering. The idea is, is to expand out of blame. And unfortunately, many of us who are more spiritually uh, aligned, minded, tend to be very hard on ourselves. And it is not very uh, conducive to us actually empowering ourselves to be an active influence in changing things. <laughs> In actually changing things. Hey, Sister Jill. Anywho, so that was the post I put on uh, as a timely reminder. And now I have something like uh, four or five questions here to, to hook through. So let's start. Sheen is here, so this is great. Hi, Matt Mantara and Bright Light Beings. Do you have thoughts on cellular memory? Do we carry traumas as well as gifts from previous generations in our lineage? If so, does any of this matter anyway? Awesome question. Um, yes, I... I uh, do have thoughts on cellular memory. I fully believe in uh, impressions coming from other time, spaces, and dimensions uh, that influence us in this life. Whether you want to call that a cellular memory or a past life memory or an energetic influence, I don't really care. I don't really care for the term. Although I do believe, because cellular memory has this idea that it's in the body, and I believe that it does enter into the body as we um, as we evolve. I think it comes in in layers. I, I see this a lot that babies and, and younger children are relatively clean cellularly, although there is this storehouse of um, impressions, energies, traumas, um, beliefs, gifts, if you like. Um, hanging somewhere, you might call it in the Earth Star. Some people call it the Earth Star. Some it doesn't really matter, right? We get all caught up in this terminology, but it's there's a there's a backpack of energy. Over time, we see that that starts to embody, that we start to take that into our body, and and you know we see that's why quite often you know uh, different illnesses or traits or uh, discomforts arise at different times, seemingly from nowhere for people. Different illnesses just pop up. And I believe that's part of this embodying of this package of cellular, what you could call cellular memory or past life memory or whatever we want to call it, right? We start to bring it into our body so that we have to deal with it, right? So that we can't just leave it in our backpack and not look at it. It starts to become very present in our lives to help us move through this. You could also call it karma, right? It's our, it's our karma, but it's not you know, karma's not payback for doing bad things. It's it's the it's it's the it's the energetic residue that you carry from doing all things, all things, whether they were quote unquote good or bad, depending on people's perspective of what's good and bad. Um, what most important is what your perspective was of was it. Were you proud of that action or were you feeling guilty of that action? Because that has definite repercussions in your energy field as time progresses. Anyway, so yes, we do carry traumas as well as gifts um, from previous generations. Um, right from from because we're attached to these people in many ways, and in in quite a few instances, we actually lived in those generations. Like it's it's not uh, too weird to believe that you are your great 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 grandmother, right? Same soul was your great great grandmother, and now you've incarnated further down the lineage. So we do carry this and we do tend to work in families um that's not always the case right but it is it, i feel that it is quite often the case um so does any of this matter anyway well not really because ultimately you don't need to understand any of that to get life right to 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 ascend you don't need to understand any of that to to be happy right or or to get spirituality quote unquote right none of that is is important but it can be beneficial to have an understanding of some of that to help you relax out of the experiences that you are having, right? To help you contextualize why you are certain ways so that you don't spend too long looking for other reasons, right? You just come to the idea, well, this is just cellular memories or these are just energies, impressions from the past. Why am I so scared of spiders? Well, it's some sort of impression from the past. It, it, and that helps us to 
you know, not make ourselves so wrong about it and also helps us to relax through the process of letting it go. Because when we accept something, generally, we have the ability to move beyond it, which seems ironic because most people think that if you accept something, then you're stuck with something, right? If you accept something from someone else, then you've got it. Now it's yours, right? That concept of acceptance is not really what I'm talking about when we talk about acceptance of situations. When we accept a situation, we stop fighting against it. We relax into it. And thus, through that relaxation process, things can shift and change. And we can expand out of being overly influenced by the situation because we basically accepted it instead of holding it at arm's reach in resistance to it. What we resist will persist, right? It's very a, a very useful thing to remember. Um, anyway, so hopefully that helps. Um, Sheena, it doesn't, you know, so it doesn't really matter, but it, it can be helpful to have an understanding. But what isn't helpful is to get all caught up in working out if something's a cellular memory or a past life memory. What does it matter? It doesn't matter what where the impression has come from, whether it was from your lineage or from your own life or, or from society. It doesn't matter if it's in your field, it's in your field. And it's something for you to relax through, expand out of, heal, perhaps um, in some ways contextualize. But not to get overly caught up in the semantics of the situation, trying to get things right, thinking that this intellect is going to think our way out of, um, out of, out of getting it all perfect. And then once you get it perfect, then God gives you the tick and you can move on. It's not like that, right? Not in my opinion. Awesome, Shina wrote. Love your answer, Matt. Relax and acceptance of situations and expansions are always, uh, or and expansions are great ways to be. Definitely. Okay, let's move on. Joe wrote in, Hi Matt, I would love to ask if our souls are here for experiences of all types, negative and positive. I'm going to keep reading before I start answering. Including dense 3D experiences which we might hurt or harm ourselves or others. If you unconsciously choose to have these dense 3D experiences, are you a quote-unquote bad person or, or chose wrong? In quotes. Have you and have to repay O karma as a type of punishment of the soul? This seems based in polarity and separation, not unity, conscious and oneness. Thank you. Awesome question again, Joe. Um, so where did I start? If we are here for all types of experiences, yes, we are. Uh, negative and positive, right? What is a negative experience and what is a positive experience? That is very, very relative to the state of being of the observer. So what you might see as the personality as a negative experience and what you might see as harm or hurt from a physical perspective, from a small person perspective. I'm saying you're a small person, Joe. I'm talking about the, the, the lower egoic mind, the personality self. Um, from that perspective, we can see that things are harmful or uncomfortable, etc. And we might call it that, oh, that's bad, right? Because we've been trained to believe that, that, that pain is bad, right? And, and anything that creates pain is therefore hurtful and harmful, which is a very narrow perspective in the, in the bigger scheme of things. Um, I'm, my guides are lovely this summary. Uh, are loving or lovely? They're both probably are both. They're probably loving it and they're lovely, Sheena. Um, so the point the point is is to first of all understand that the 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 the, the projection that something's a negative experience or that something's hurting someone else or hurting yourself. What is what really is harm to you as the bigger being? Can you be harmed as an individuation of God Source Universe? Right? So and I understand the physical body can be harmed, right? I can cut myself and bleed and, and, and create a wound that needs to heal and all the rest of it. But did that really harm me, right? Did that really harm me? Or did that give me an opportunity? Sorry, I've got messages and things going off all over the show. Um, did that really harm me or did that give me an opportunity? Me as the bigger being, me as the individuation of God's source universe, me as the soul. Did that give me an opportunity to learn and grow and to experience all experiences, right? And therefore gain wisdom. See, this is the point. So your question becomes very um, uh, dependent on what your frame of reference is here about who we are, right? Um, because from the soul perspective, right? Harm is very hard to cause or to experience, right? Yes, we carry residues that 
have influence moving forward into the future, right? As we were just talking about with Sheena's question about cellular memories and stuff. Having experiences that create emotional disturbance in our energetic field then have to be worked through in the past. You could call that harm, but really all of that working through in the future to clear that and to expand out of that is part of our gaining of wisdom and is part of our growth. So again, it's not a bad thing, even though it's an uncomfortable thing, and even though it holds us back from achieving this per this perception that there's some sort of uh, end point to this process, right? Most of us think we're in a rush, to ascend. Most of us think we're in a rush to spiritually evolve. Most of us are, are in a rush to find happiness, right? But the point is that our happiness is not over all of those hurdles that we think are spiritual growth and ascension when we sort of heal all of our past life wounds and now we can be happy, right? Our happiness is available right now. This is the point. So, um, and, and part of achieving our happiness right now is, have, is holding a more expansive perspective as to what is harm and what is hurt and what is a good experience and what is a bad experience so that we can relax out of all of those judgmental conclusions around that, well, that was bad, that shouldn't have happened, I wish that didn't happen, I've got to fix that now, um, and, and recognize that, wow, that was an interesting experience, uh, what should we do now? to move forward from here, right? It's not that you need to fix it, but you definitely need to move forward. And some of that moving forward might look like fixing, um, right? It might be going to the hospital to get stitched up, or it might be, you know, talking to someone and, and helping to, to soothe some of the emotional discomfort that they're feeling based on the words that you spoke, et cetera, et cetera, right? Healing experiences. Um, but, so the second part of your question, are you a bad person who have chosen wrong and now have karma as a type of punishment? Karma is not a punishment. Karma is a natural um, residue of energy left over from an experience. So if you've done something that you are feeling great guilt about, then you will tend to attract situations that, that punish you for that, right? Because that's what guilt does. It attracts things that create punishment. If you've done things that have created expansion and joy and you feel very proud of, you will probably attract situations that expand you into a, a greater sense of accomplishment and success. You could call that karma, right? And think that there's some sort of overlord, God, um, adjudicator, uh, delivering you your your punishment or your reward, but but that would be a, a gross oversimplification and a very sort of human fairy tale thing to do. Ultimately, it is all just energy mechanics, in my opinion. Right, the energy residue that you are holding, based on the experience you had of a situation in the past, whether you believe you did wrong or you believe you did right, whether you believed you were victimized or whether you believed you were the rescuer, doesn't really matter. But whatever you believe has created an energetic imprint in your field and that will attract situations to you. That is karma. That is the law of karma. What you do will come back to you, right? Uh, but the thing is, it's what you do is not based in absoluteness. It's based in your perspective of what you did, your perspective of your situation, your experience of that situation has left an energetic imprint, an energetic residue, uh, an impression in your field. And that attracts things because what you are resonating is what you are attracting. So what you, cause, cause what you're resonating with is what you are radiating. So if you're resonating with guilt and shame, then you keep attracting bad shit into your life. If you're resonating with an up level joy and uh, a glass half full attitude towards life, then you attract those things into your life. It's not, it's not punishment or reward. It is simply energy mechanics. Jill said, I had a therapy client once who always had bad colds and felt overly traumatized and debilitated with each sniffles. I'm going to find that to read somewhere else. How much means I just need to do it? Uh, I did a Chiron regression with her and felt the point she died of tuberculosis in past lifetimes and worked on her leaving that memory back in that lifetime. She told me afterwards that as a small child, she repeatedly said to her mum she felt she was dying of, of consumption. She felt more able to cope after the session. Don't know how she got on with the COVID thing. Um, yeah, exactly, Jill. So these healings help people to change their perspective around what they are dealing with so that... Um, so they can change their narrative, right? 
change their narrative. They can release old belief systems, stories that are keeping them stuck in repetitive loops. So, yeah, all sorts of um, therapies and sessions and hypnosis work and regression work, all of it has value. Uh, tapping, EFT, whatever you do that the client thinks is going to work for them and they can get on board with and can reveal and change their narratives and help them feel that they can cope and uplift their vibration is going to be um, beneficial. Jen says, what about the idea that opposites attract, i.e. masculine and feminine energies are attracted to each other as complementary energies? Yep, that is exactly true as well, Jen. I don't think that's in opposition to the idea that what you are resonating with is what you attract. Um, <clears throat> because it's interesting. I know, I know it seems like a polar opposite, but um, there's different layers to attraction. And um, there's different layers to energetic being. Um, it, it is an interesting concept. I agree that we both um, see that opposites attract and that likes attract. Um, and how do we reconcile that? It's one of those things, isn't it? How? And I think, and I think the important, the I think the benefit in recognizing what you've just put out there is that things aren't as simple as we like to make them out. The things that we, we have all of these reductionist, simple, uh, reductionist um, similes or, or belief systems, you know, like opposites attract or likes attract and what you're being is what you're attracting, etc., etc. But they're not nearly so absolute as we want to make them out. Our mind wants to think, oh, now I understand. And, and, and it's simple. We always like this idea that, oh, it's simple. It's just like this. Um, it's not simple. I, I, I love simplicity, right? And I, I believe a lot of things are more simple than we make them out to be. So I'm, I'm always... So again, I'm just, I'm just showing that this world is full of contradiction because while things are simple on one way and we, and we tend to overcomplicate things much with our mind, we also are very reductionist and oversimplify things. So we tend to oscillate in these, in these polarities of either oversimplifying or overcomplicating things. And we can't just relax into how they be. And I think that what we're talking about right now with this idea that both opposites attract and likes attract is one such thing where we see these conflicting oversimplifications of, uh, of an entangled energetic field um, where all sorts of different mechanisms are operating. And it's just a matter of which one's operating uh, more effectively or, or more intensely um, in any one particular moment. Um, so I do believe there's, you know, that opposites do attract, um, but that doesn't, but, but see someone who's being overly negative in their mind doesn't tend to attract people who are overly positive to them. Um, not for any length of time. Anyway, we see that there's a repulsion that occurs. Um, but there is truth that opposites attract and, and we often see because, in some situations, opposites feel like completions. This is the point. And many of us are feeling incomplete. And that's why we like to uh, attract and we feel a resonance with things that are as a perceived polar difference to us. Um, and there's, and there's, you know, there's some sense to this, right? Um, you know, men and women have different characteristics in general. This big generalizations and together, they complement each other, right? They bring a, you know, a unification to the house. Um, now, and then, of course, some people in men's bodies are more feminine and some people in women's bodies are more masculine. And they can also um, have to work things out there too to bring balance in. So um, whether that's homosexuality or whether it's flipped um, dynamics where the woman's wearing the pants, so to speak, um, these things tend to work out because if you have two very masculine people trying to get on, then they tend to come into conflict more often. And if you have two overly feminine people trying to relate, then there doesn't tend to be a lot of quote unquote leadership going on and not a lot of, um, impetus to get things done, right? It gets a bit too wishy-washy.
Yeah, so Jill wrote, a Buddhist friend of mine said opposites might get attracted to each other to fill a perceived void in themselves, but it could... But it could be problematic as, as it just highlights their own lack. Likes attract and then rival each other. No hope, really. <laughs> there is hope because I think whatever attracts, whatever, whatever situation presents gives us the opportunities to grow. And I think that's the most important, that, that we get the opportunities to grow. Um, and all sorts of situations are going to give us that. Okay, I am so far behind in answering these questions. I'm going to have to turbo boost it. So that was your Mary. Milton said, oh yeah, that's great. That was an easy one. So Zena, a couple of weeks ago, I interviewed David McBride, the whistleblower of the Afghan files exposing Australian special forces atrocities against civilians in Afghanistan. As, as David's case is going to trial in September with a potential of a lifelong prison sentence if convicted, he is one of five high-profile whistleblowers currently facing a similar fate with trial dates looming. All of these people have been incredibly courageous a great at great personal cost to do what they believe to be the right and just thing. They face overwhelming odds and ongoing persecution by a corrupt system. We are seeing so much of this in our world right now. Speaking with David was so deeply moving and impactful for me. And knowing all of his efforts may be buried and the corrupt individuals never held to account while he spends a lifetime incarcerated only reinforces how dark forces in our world seem to be holding sway. So many of the interviews I have done recently, I have had similar themes. Matt, you have spoken often of how these dark forces are not winning and yet often seems that they are. Is this perhaps the intended journey of the 3D experience on this planet, our Earth school, or is there something tangible we can do to turn the tide? I, I think both. I think there's definitely this is part of the journey, and it is also, um, and it is also we. There's plenty of things we can do, um, and we can definitely choose to keep. Uh, um, is friggin' messaging me. This is going to be a tirade. Um, <laughs> she sends about a million messages. Um, anyway, um, let me get back on track. So, okay, let's cut to the chase here. I believe a lot of what is happening now in terms of um, exposure of dark things and the dark's very intense um, suppression of this and going to great lengths to bury it and, and create personal pain for those choosing to bravely show up and highlight what is not going so well and what is being done that is out of integrity on this planet is part of the process. <clears throat> and while it seems very difficult to... Um, it seems very difficult to... Um, reconcile the idea that people who are doing the right thing may, quote unquote, may uh, suffer consequences for doing so in this lifetime. Um, and that seems like a, a great big fat wrongness that is unfair. And yet, going back to where we started this conversation, every soul is having... Um, 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 Every, sorry, I'm trying to get rid of all of these messages. Every soul is having their perfect experience. Um, so, so, um, so it's not a case of getting all caught up in our human idea of fairness. Now, in David's case, I believe there is a great chance that this will not go so well at first and that the will get thrown out and he may well find himself incarcerated on a lengthy sentence. I don't, however, believe that he will serve anywhere near the entirety of that sentence, as I believe over the next few years, a lot of things are going to unfold in positive ways and a lot of things that have been done will be undone. So he is playing a role in helping to get the momentum moving. Uh, just like Julian Assange, just like Assange, just like lots and lots of people who seem to be pushing shit uphill. It's part of the way showers um, journey, really. Those who go first have a real hard time of it. Uh, many of us are experiencing this as we choose to hold the light on this planet, whether we're doing so in 
dramatic ways of, of whistleblowing and showing up in that way, or I just, um, you know, answered a messenger from someone this morning who is choosing to stand up and speak out at her local council body um, meetings, right, and to draw, to highlight things that she believes is out of integrity. So a whistleblower of sorts on a smaller scale, also feeling great uh, trepidation in choosing to take that stance and, and to speak out when, when, when uh, you know, it feels dangerous to do so. But many of us are being called to, to take such actions, whether this is in our interpersonal relationships, whether this is more in our group um, relationships in, in small scales, right? Our circle of friends, our, our church group, et cetera, et cetera. We have been called to stand in integrity with what we truly believe and stop just complying with what the group mentality momentum is carrying us forward into, which has been set up in a in a uh, quote unquote dark way or an oppressive way. So it is uncomfortable and it is hard to reconcile the idea that many of these people don't seem to win. But Every action they're taking in this direction is creating an influence in a quote-unquote positive way, in a light-filled way, positive from our perspective, being beings of light, right? Um, so it might seem like we that these people lose their case or lose their individual battle, but overall they're contributing to an overriding avalanche of energy that will uh, see that light returns to this planet in rather spectacular way. Um, so the point is, we, we seem to think that they suffer. And of course, on a human level, they do. But again, these are important and val valid and valuable learning experiences for the soul. And so from a soul level, nothing wrong is happening, um, even though there might be quote unquote, on the personality level, a great cost to some of the actions that are taken in terms of comfort. So um, th this is it. It is, it is difficult to um, learn and uh, to, to, to hold space of acceptance around this. And, but again, I believe it is, um, it's part of kind of what we've been talking about, this entanglement where things aren't as simple as they look. Um, Things aren't as simple as they look. And so we, we like to think that if someone's doing the right thing based on the light, then they will be, you know, winning because we are moving into the light right now. And um, unfortunately, it's not quite the case. But ultimately, we're all playing our role. And it's what's important for us is to follow our heart and trust that whatever situation arises, whether it's comfortable or uncomfortable, it is serving us and it is beneficial for us and it is beneficial for the all for us to be more authentically uh, present and expressive as our expansive self. And we're going to feel some grief and it's okay to feel dismay and it's okay to feel a host of emotions that are rising to the surface right now because that is part of what has held us. Um, you know, our, our fear of, of, of dense energies has held us captive for a long time. And the only way we're going to overcome that is to experience dense energies and to arise above them. Um, yeah. Anyway, I've got two more here. So Zena also wrote, also an entirely separate issue. CERN will go into full power on July 5th. Many believe this is an attempt by dark forces to open a portal to another dimension. Your thoughts on this? Yeah, I'm not sure. It might be their attempts to open a, a, a portal. Um, I don't believe They've got a shit show. Well, they could open a portal, but I don't believe they can turn the tide in what is naturally happening. Um, <clears throat> Jen wrote here, I wonder if there's a better frame other than light versus dark, where we fight for the light, which suggests that darkness... Oh, I've read that up here. Yeah, I agree, Jen. It is, it is difficult. We keep talking about polarities and trying to expand out of them. Uh, we keep trying to fight for the light, which suggests that darkness is the enemy or something to fight against. What if darkness was not the enemy? What if the denial and repression and judgment of the darkness is what causes it to be misused? And when we integrate what darkness is actually within us, then we can be more empowered with how we choose to use the darkness rather than trying to get rid of it. Yeah, we're never going to get rid of darkness. And I think that's important. Um, what we're currently going, and I believe there's, there is definite a lot of 
Um, I don't want to use the word truth. There's a lot of benefit in what you're saying, Jen. I think as long as we are perceiving that darkness is something to fight against, we're always going to be um, supporting um, darkness having more power in our lives than we would like. Um, the truth is many of us are aligned with light. And while polarities in general are disempowering, I believe that it's also valid to recognize that there is light and dark and there is masculine and feminine and there is certain primal divisions of God's source universe, which are illusions by all stretch of the imagination. In total reality, there is only one, but in that reality, there is no relationship either. So um, I think there's, again, it's not one or the other here. There's definitely a benefit in relaxing against fighting against darkness as it's the enemy. And we're certainly not trying to get rid of darkness. All we are choosing to do is expand ourselves into the ability to be more expressive in our light-filled ways rather than feeling oppressed by the darkness. And I agree that a lot of that journey is about accepting that we are all carrying darkness and we always all will carry darkness. There will always be shadows. Wherever there is matter, there is shadow. Because when light shines on matter, it creates a shadow. Um, and so this is inevitable and perfect and important, right? We can't have a world that has no darkness. It, again, there's, again, there's no contrast in that world. So it's not about getting rid of the darkness, but it is also about recognizing also and holding an empowered attitude towards the, the dynamic that's playing out currently so that we can make sense of what is happening hopefully not in too much of a reductionist way, but in a way that helps us to um, hold our integrity in what we are choosing to do and not to get um, overly swayed. So yeah, as per usual, um, it's complex. Anyway, as, in, as for this CERN, and for the people who don't know, CERN is this, um, well, it's two things. I think it's a governing body of nuclear power, but 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 what uh, but what Zena's talking about here is the the particle accelerator um, and a whole huge laboratory system that deals with um, nuclear physics, if you like, and particle acceleration and nuclear power, etc., etc., etc. And they have been ramping this thing up, and people have been taking photos lately of weird cloud formations and stuff over the top. And there's a lot of quote unquote conspiracy theory about the idea that this is going to open up a portal to another world. Can you open up a portal to another world accelerating um, particles um, and creating huge amounts of energy? Potentially, yes, because a lot of the, you know, a lot of the, the, the foundation of the universe is around this idea of nuclear energy, right? A lot of these black holes and, and sun systems and wormholes, etc., are basically high energy um, particle mechanics. Um, if they were to do so, would it be bad? I, you know, I, I, I don't feel so. I, I, I certainly don't feel to get stressed about this um, because at this stage, what could I do about it anyway? Um, even if I was to start shouting from the hilltops that, hey, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, would that stop anything? I don't believe so. It would just create more fear. Um, I believe my job, our job, is to hold uh, a space of optimism and light and confidence in who we be if these quote-unquote dark beings who are running a whole lab system using particle accelerators to da -da 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 -da, do something quote-unquote bad <laughs> that opens up a portal to some sort of dimension that allows more dark energy to come onto this planet to try and stem the tide that the earth is naturally moving through uh, a space of the galaxy that allows more light to flow in more photon energy is coming in onto the planet, which is making it hard for dark beings to operate and is making it easier and easier for us to be more light-filled, then um, so be it. Um, you know, we man they managed to create a whole disturbance that, that you know, expediated things uh, with Atlantis um, through doing similar sorts of shit, really, although they weren't using particle accelerators, they were using crystal technologies, etc., etc. But at the end of the day, um, 
I care, but I don't worry. <laughs> I care, but I don't worry. So, um, so yeah, that's it. Right, I'll quickly read Jill's question and then we better, um, we better shoot off. Had a very draining, sapping energy about today in my part of England. Yeah, it's it's the day before full moon, uh, before new moon. It is a very draining day. It's Amavasya, they call it in Hindu mythology or mythology, Hindu culture. Um, Amavasya is is the day they have off. It's the dark moon day, um, new moon day. So it is a day um, inherently of low energy. It's a great day to meditate. It's a great day to rest. It's a great day to be present with what you are releasing. That's today. Um, so, um, that's, that's the nature of it. Coupled with a strange shape, cut with talking about clouds now, coupled with strange shaped cloud formations offering often with rainbows within them, similar to clouds I saw in Madeira four years ago, just in whatever, are we, we were installing their new, just as who are we were installing their new technology. Um, coincidence, probably not. Yeah, potentially. Potentially, there's all sorts of um, stuff going on. Um, sorry, I'm seeing these comments that I've got all over my freaking screen. People asking me other questions, but I'm not going to start answering my personal medical questions. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that helps, friends. Um, Don't worry, right? I think what's important for us to be um, advocating for the outcome that we want is for us to align with the light and to relax into it. And that's not to make, quote unquote, darkness bad. But when I say align with the light, I'm talking about aligning with your true nature um, and trusting in, in the joy and the expansive being that you choose to be is... Um, is present and can, can be expressed more. Choose not to, you know, fear darkness. We all are holding darkness in all sorts of forms, different indoctrinations and different uh, experiences that we've had it and different, um, different inherent natures as well. Like, you know, the, there's aspects to darkness that are beneficial, you know, just like yeah, all polarities it's not one side of the coins, right? Masculine's not better than feminine. Feminine's not better than masculine. Light is not better than dark, and dark is not better than light. They both have the, their influences. That's um, that's valid, right? And but like all polarities, like even hot and cold, hot has its uses, and cold has its uses, right? We don't want our refrigeration to be hot, and we don't want our stove to be cold. We want to use the right vibration for the right application. Darkness has applications. Masculine has applications. Everything has applications. It's but, but, but what's important or what's valid is to recognize when things are out of balance and when things are imposing on the other. If we have a predominance of cold imposing upon where we would like warmth, then we need to do something about it. We've had on this planet an, an imposition of the darkness based on the climactic energetic energetic climactic conditions where darkness has overstepped in in our opinion as beings of light has overstepped their position and have brought far too much authoritarian control um to to a situation where they're using utilizing fear to create dominance and thus ability to keep people in line and and that's not appealing to those of us of our ilk and so we're choosing to redistribute that power. We're choosing to take our own power back. We're choosing to recognize how darkness has overly influenced us and kept us small and impotent so that we can expand out and be a greater influence in our purpose on this planet. Darkness isn't wrong for doing what they've done. They've done what they've done. Just like, you know, we can look at death in, in, in a forest, right? And fungi eating dead things and, and even um, <clears throat> parasites killing a tree, for example. And we can think that that's bad and wrong, that this death energy has come in and killed something that was beautiful. 
but in doing so it's made space and it's, it's given opportunity for the forest to keep evolving so um and then when it falls to the ground different fungi and different forms of darkness or death right dark energies uh proliferate within that those conditions but it makes way for new forms of light to flourish so everything has its role and everything has its place it's it, it's about balance and it's about perspective and many of us now um are having to take difficult steps into being more predominant in our light despite the fact that we're out of the habit of doing so because this darkness has had um, a predominance on this planet for several thousands of years jules wrote we need darkness when we go to sleep to tr for melatonin yeah you know like look at the phases of, of night and day um in terms of that analogy of light and dark you know we talk about light and dark but we're talking about energetic resonances that it has very little to do with with visible light <laughs> it has very little to do with visible light in the scheme of things but we all tend to reduce it back to that idea um anywho so see our terminology is all screwed up we we could you know maybe we should use light and dense as opposed to light and dark i don't know if that would help or, or use something other than light yeah Susie, I am getting off right now. Susie said, I just jumped on to listen to the replay and you're still here. Yeah, I was a little late starting and I'm a lot late finishing and I am going to close this up now because I have another call starting in nine minutes time. So much love to you all, my friends. Um, keep your chins up. Uh, do your best to relax through the new moon energies. Trust that everything's unfolding um, to serve you. Even though it's uncomfortable, choose not to get contracted around things going wrong. Choose not to get drawn into fighting against what you perceive as an injustice. But at the same time, advocate for what you desire to see in the world. Be brave. Be confident. Choose to show up and choose to progress yourself through your own evolutionary path. It is uncomfortable to stand up and to be authentic as yourself. But that is exactly what we're all being called to do despite the discomfort. Anyway, my friends, much, much love. I'll speak to you again next week. Bye for now.